Hey, what is going on YouTube? This is Coded Steel and welcome to another App Inventor 2 tutorial. Uh, today we're going to continue where we left off last time with the login interface. Uh, my first attempt at recording this, I didn't really like the way it turned out. So I'm actually re-recording this and I made some changes to the way that I'm actually going to go about doing this this time. So uh, hopefully it'll go better. Uh, first of all, just a quick thing, uh, as far as a login screen goes, I'm not going to probably show you a really good proper login screen. Um, I mean, one that I could probably go through and I could make this better, but it would take me a little while to actually make it look the way I want it to. If you want to see an example of an actual login screen being used in an app, um, check out my Bluetooth uh, light switch uh, video that I made and you can see my login screen on that app. I will probably post a link at the end of this video to that if you guys are interested in checking out that. But uh, anyways, uh, let's get on to this finishing this tutorial. So if you guys remember last time, all I did was just created this simple user interface or this login interface, username, password, some text fields to take in the information and then a button. And then there's a label down here that we really can't see, but if I went ahead and uh, highlighted it. You can see it's this little square right there. So we kind of we kind of have everything that we needed to create a simple login interface but what we don't have is somebody who's generally using this. If, they're, if it's only going to be seen to their eyes maybe they don't want to type in their username and their password especially if they're going to be using the app continuously. So what we're actually going to be able to do is we're going to add in this checkbox and what this checkbox is actually going to do and we're going to actually bump it up we're going to bump the label down so now the labels bump down below it and then the checkbox is there so what the checkbox is going to do is it's going to be basically a uh, not a keep me logged in button it's just going to, I'm going to make it uh, save uh, what do you say save info something like that save your information, save username and password information. I guess that's kind of what would work. And then what we're going to do is when that's clicked, when you hit login, it'll save the username and password and that way the next time when we open the app, that information will be saved uh, in memory. So I said memory too by the way guys. Uh, up until this point uh, and it, I obviously I haven't been doing these tutorials for long, but up until this point, every single bit of memory that we've been using to create these apps has been temporary memory. So as soon as we closed the application, the app would forget whatever we did. It only knows what it's programmed to do when certain things happen, and it won't remember anything that you did while you were using the application. So to add memory to a program, you actually need to go under the storage palette tab over here and pull in what's called a tiny DB. And what a tiny DB is, is it basically pulls a section out of your, your phone memory or your tablet memory, whatever you're using. It pulls a section of memory out of there and uses it to store pertinent information for a given app. Any app that you download off of the Android store or even if you're a Mac user, you download off the Apple store, is going to reserve, it's going to take some of your memory and store it kind of just like cookies on your web browser. Whenever you go to a website, uh, a website may put cookie information on your browser to save certain uh, things, like maybe some games use that stuff to save variables for where you're at in the game. It's similar here. The uh, app, when I pull in this tiny DB here, the app is gonna reserve some memory space to store application components. So that's what a tiny DB does. It's kind of like, uh, if you guys have ever dealt with a microcontroller before, or if any of you guys have any uh, programming experience with a microcontroller, think of it as an EEPROM. You can write and you can fill that information up, and then if you wanted to, you can also write back over the top of that variable and change its variable. Like if you were doing level information, you'd have a variable maybe called last level saved, and you would save the level that person was on, but then maybe they get past that level. So you want to save that very under that variable now the new level that they're on, and then you can do that with the tiny db variable. So, anyways, uh, that's pretty much all we need to do for this part of the tutorial is adding this in. The next thing we're gonna do 
is we're gonna head into the actual login page here. So if you guys remember, basically what we have going on here, uh, you hit the login button, it checks the text fields to see uh, user and pass if it's those are in the text field blanks and then it goes to the next screen. Okay, and then if it doesn't, then it's invalid and it does nothing. It just flashes invalid on the screen and, and tells you you're a loser and whatever else. So we need to actually add in some storage components for a database. So how we do that is just like any other component, when we drag it into the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the uh, application window, it has underneath the blocks a logic component that shows up. For this, it's called TinyDB. So we're actually only going to need to use two things out of this. We're going to use the store value and the get value components for the um, tiny database. And also, we need all, uh, from the, I'm going to pull the uh, checkbox check status out as well. And I think, yeah, also I'm going to pull the set checkbox that check, checkbox one set check. Okay, so let me quickly explain these components. The checkbox, this is the check status. So it'll return true if it's checked and false if it's not checked. So that we can use that in an if statement like we did with these. Uh, return the text information if the text information is equal to this and this text information is equal to that, then do something, okay? Similarly, checkbox checked is gonna check and see if the box is checked. If it is, then it'll do something. And also, if it isn't, it could do something too if we set it up that way. And then this is for setting the checkbox.checked to true or false or, or whatever. Um, so that's that stuff. We can set it to true or false and that'll actually basically you know, set it to checked or not checked based upon what we do. And then the tiny DB, first of all, when we store a value, we have to store it in a variable name. The variable name is called the tag. So if I went ahead and I created a tag called fudge, fudge, yeah, fudge, <laughs> fudge, I can choose what's going to be stored under the fudge variable. Maybe I want to store the word fudge under the variable fudge. I don't know. Um, but whenever I do that, if I ever make a get value call to that and I type in whatever the variable name is into this, or in this case, I just plug the block in, and then I set that equal to a variable, that variable ret will return whatever's stored in this variable. And what's stored in that variable? Yeah, stored in that variable. The text fudge under the variable fudge so enough kind of talking about it uh, I guess it's probably best to teach by example and you guys probably learn best by example so let me actually show you guys what is going on here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in this if statement here and we're essentially going to do something like this we're going to go under logic we gotta drag this little fancy block in and then I gotta drag in this Okay, so here's what's going to go down. If the checkbox is checked, that's this statement. That's right here, basically me saying, if the checkbox is checked, then I want to do something. And what do I want to do? Well, in this case, what I actually want to do is I only want to do this if the username and the password succeeds. So basically, um, in order for anything to get stored in the database, which is how I'm going to do this here, we're going to do two storage calls. Actually, we're going to do three storage calls, and I'm going to explain why in just a second. We're going to do three storage calls uh, here, and one of them is going to be U, one of them is going to be P, and then one of them is going to be uh, actually not this stuff. It's going to be whatever is in these fields. So... Just kind of try to follow what I'm doing here for a second, and I will explain in just a second what is in the heck is going on so you guys are not confused. So let me go ahead and say uh, C, and okay, that's cool. And we'll just add in, I don't know, uh, the word or the letter. Uh, P or something. I don't know. Yeah, we'll just we'll just add in uh, 
uh, checked actually, whatever, there. I guess that makes it better. So what's going to happen here is what I have going on, if the check, if if you hit the login button, we're going to check and see if this stuff works. If it does work, then we're going to store that information only if the checkbox is checked, meaning somebody wants to st save their user information in the fields. So we go ahead and also save that and tell the system that the box is checked. Well, here's the thing, and I'm going to have to explain this to you guys because it might not necessarily make sense. I have to add in, and actually, why am I adding an else if? I can just add an S, else. And I actually have to add something else. And I will explain why in just a second. I have to add in uh, not. And the reason why is this. Upon first entry into the app, um, as soon as we click this stuff, and this, stu and this variable gets set here to checked, Whenever, well, actually, I guess I still need to do some showing off here because I feel like you guys still won't quite get what I'm talking about unless I uh, do this. Screen1.initialize. I'm adding in a, this screen1.initialize component. What initialization means is as soon as the screen is open, I think something will hover around here. Screen starting. So that basically means we return to that screen or we are going to that screen. And when that screen starts, it's going to execute a specific set of instructions. So as soon as that screen is initialized, it's going to do some stuff. Well, what we're actually going to do is we're going to pull this variable. And how we're going to do that is we're going to use an if statement, the same way as we would any other time. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to do this. We're going to say equals, and actually that's not the right equals I want to use, I think, right? Because I want to use the, maybe it is the logical equals, right? Yeah, that is the one we used. Yeah, we can compare anything. Okay, we're going to do this. And it's not going to be fudge, it's going to be C. And what's going to happen here is if C, whatever's stored in that thing, is checked then we want to do something and what we actually want to do is we're going to do two things we're going to go ahead and set these text fields and we're going to set the text back uh, check text box to true so I know I haven't been explaining anything I apologize for that guys but I feel like it'll be better for me to just go through do the whole thing and then explain to you what exactly is going on so that way it makes sense to you guys, I guess. Uh, da, 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 set text. Where is that at? There it is. All right. And then set text again. Come on, come on, come on. There it is right there. Set text to blah, blah, blah. All right. So cool. Let's pull that into there and pull that into there. And it doesn't matter in which order we do it. And we do, boom, two of those. The tags are u and p and p will go here and u will go here alrighty and then another else if it's if it's not checked equal to checked which would be if it's not then uh, don't you know pull this information in here and you know Blah, 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 blah. So basically just set the checkbox to false um, by default. Even though I really don't need to do that, I'm still going to do it. And I'll explain why you really don't need to do it in a second. So now we should successfully have a working code. So let me explain what is going on now really fast. And then I will demonstrate it to you. So just like in the last code, when we hit the button, it's going to check and see if this stuff happens or if this stuff's equal. And if it is, it's going to allow you to do something. And what it's going to allow you to do then is check this if statement and see if the person checked the checkbox on the screen. So if I tap the checkbox, uh, if the checkbox was tapped before I hit the login button, then I want to do this stuff. So I want to store the password. I want to do all of that stuff and blah, 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 blah. And then I also want to store the checked status. So upon... And the reason I'm storing the check status here is because as soon as the app gets closed permanently, 
we have to know whether or not the box was originally checked by the user so we can open the app with the box checked. Uh, makes sense, right? Because if I stored the information and I want to load the information into the actual box, I want the person to have the ability to uncheck the box. So if they uncheck the box and then they exited the screen, then the next time it wouldn't load the information in. Makes sense, right? So that's just kind of how this is going to kind of go down here. So it'll store all these information in these variables here with these tags. Store value, it'll store whatever's in the text box under U. Store whatever's in the password box under P. Store the check status. And then if this is if the box is not checked, meaning that you know the person didn't check, tap the box, then it comes up false and it won't go to the next screen. And then it also will uh uh, oh yeah, blah blah blah. That was not checked, so you know it's not. So I forgot about that part. <laughs> and then after this, this done evaluating this, if this happened and it was true, then it'll do this. If not, it'll say invalid, and you have to retype in your stuff. Now, this other block is much easier to explain. This is what happens when the screen is initialized. So as soon as the screen's initialized, it's going to say, "Oh, was this person previously using the app? If they were, we need to check and see if this variable exists." If this variable doesn't exist, we're just gonna type in empty, I guess. I don't know. So we're gonna type in empty. And this stuff would fail then the first time you open the app. And this variable would essentially be set, uh, would would be, you know, set to empty, so to speak. Or it would return empty and then this condition would fail. But after we go ahead and we use the app one time, then, and if we entered in the information correctly, it will do this. It will actually be able to go in and say, oh, the person checked the box because checked was stored in here. So this tag exists. Checked is checked. We do this. The box is checked. This happens. That happens. Cool. We're, we're ready to go. If not, obviously the box is not checked. It's going to store not in there. And then this wouldn't succeed. And then this would go ahead and it would set check to false. And the, block, uh, the blocks are the text fields would be empty. So that's just kind of a quick, you know, rough explanation of exactly what's going on. Uh, enough rough explanations, and let's actually uh, let's give this app a good test here. So let's see, we're gonna build the app, providing a QR code. So while this is building, um, uh, like I was saying before, I've actually created a successful Bluetooth app login or for uh, my Bluetooth login screen, which Bluetooth is some stuff we'll talk about later. That's something I want to show you guys eventually because it's a, it's a very cool way of communicating with the outside world. I'm sure you guys know what Bluetooth is. Oh, well, there's our QR code. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to quick scan that. Um, okay, we'll scan the QR code. Yay, download the app on my... Android tablet, go under settings, say yes, unknown sources, okay, cool, install, do all this stuff. Come on, big guy. Get this stuff on, just get the show on the road. All right, the box is open, yay! So we can test our app here. Um, what we're going to do first is so I've already tested the functionality of it last time. You guys know it will not let me in, and it'll say invalid if stuff fails. So there's no point in me doing that. What I need to show you is the storage part of the thing. So user and pass. Okay, we're going to log in, and it's going to take me to screen two, just like it did last time. You know, that's cool. That's all well and good and everything. But, you know, there's a problem here because... Uh, close that out since the uh, checkbox wasn't checked if I go ahead and I close this app now oh shoot why did I take that off the screen uh, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry about that but if I close the app and I go back in that stuff wasn't saved in the text box remember because we didn't hit save info so what if that's desirable? Like I said before, that's the reason we added this checkbox in. So I can type in user, I can type in pass, and then I can say done. And then I can hit the save info checkbox button. So if this information is correct, when save info is checked, it will allow the information to be stored in the database. And the next time we open the app, our user and our password information will be in these text fields and we won't have to re-enter them. 
saves us a little bit of time if we know we're the only ones that are going to be using this app. So let's go ahead and we'll hit log in. Now, it doesn't look like anything really changed. And that's because, like I said before, we've already seen this stuff happen. So we know that it's going to succeed in getting into the page and, and all of that stuff. So what we actually need to do now is I need to show you guys that this thing actually worked. So just like before, I got to close the application and hopefully my stuff will work out for me. And it did. You guys can see the user and I closed the application and the user and password information arrived in the text fields just like they did before. So I can log in and go back to the page. All right, that's all well and good and everything. But what if I don't want my info being, what if I want to disable it for some reason? What if I want to make it to where somebody can't use my stuff anymore? Well, that's what the save info unchecking does. So when I log in, I go back. Yeah, it's still there right now, but I promise you it won't be there in just a second because I'm going to close the app and we're going to reopen it. And since I disabled the checkbox, it went ahead and it executed this routine when login was checked and set the variable to not now. So now this condition will fail, none of this stuff will happen, and then the checked status will be set to false. So let's actually make sure that that works the way we intended it to work. And I open the app without showing you guys. Sorry about that, but you guys can see clink, uh, clearly that when I clicked back into the app, none of the information showed up in the text box. So we can now officially, if the user wants to save his info because he knows he's the only one that's going to be using it, we now have the ability to do that. And then at the same time, we can offer security for users who are going to head, uh, go ahead and, and uh, let their kids use this or something. And maybe there's pertinent information. Maybe this is some kind of an app, like I said, that before that controls some home automation things like your garage door or, or some garbage like that. Um, we want to make sure that you know they're not capable of screwing with any of that stuff. So that's why we went ahead and we designed our login screen. So let's see here. Um, this video I think has gone on long enough. Uh, that's all I have for you guys for this tutorial. Please uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Next time we will be building a procedure uh, we will be uh, you, uh, introducing you guys to procedures over here and more of the math operations. And I thought, what better, or perfect, or what per more perfect of an example than Ohm's law? So if you guys are familiar with Ohm's law before, yeah, we'll be using that next time, and uh, that's what our procedures demonstration will be: is building an Ohm's law calculator. So I can't wait to show that to you guys. I will see you guys in your next tutorial, and uh, yeah, I guess that's it.